The Far Seer Trilogy by Robin Hobb. One of the great names of fantasy, and after finishing this trilogy, I clearly see why. I was pretty warm on the first book, I liked it overall except for a mild, just meh feeling towards Fitz, but the second book solved that quite well and was a good step up in quality, I thought, overall. And I'm happy to say that I feel like the third book was even better than the second. I've had a few comments, more than a few, telling me that the third book doesn't have a satisfactory ending, but... I disagree, and I want to talk about the third book for the first little bit of this video, and then we're going to get into my thoughts as far as here as a whole, so go ahead and skip to this point if you don't care about what I think about specifically the third book. But let's go ahead and talk about Assassin's Quest. Fitz continues to take shit as a character. It's kind of one of his just main jobs, it seems, to be someone who's constantly taking abuse and recovering. He does a spectacular job of it, and his development as a character to this point and the payoff in Assassin's Quest is pretty magnificent. It really drives me to want to pick up the rest of The Realm of the Elderling by Robin Hobb because of just how much I'm invested into this character, and the third book really inspired me to be more invested in this overall world. But let's talk about the plot specifics here. This is a bitter sweet book. I mean, there is not the kind of happy conclusion that I think a lot of people would expect going into this here, and I'm not going to get into specifics, obviously, but wow, this took some turns that I really was hit by. And I guess actually I should have seen it coming with how dark some of the first two books get. It just was magnificent. This has cemented Robin Hobb as one of my favorites for fantasy, and the third book, beat for beat, I don't think there's much I can change there because, well, yes, obviously there's like little tweaks that I think I could personally preference-wise like here and there a bit better. I can see how with the mega fans, with the diehards, how this third book would just be such a hit home for them. Robin Hobb's character work, as I've said again and again and again, is spectacular, and especially in this third book, all the work, all the development she has put into these characters pays off deliciously. I'm still not claiming this third book is perfect. Like the rest of Farseer, its pacing's not flawless. It has some of this just okay, we're continuing along. It's slower, and the action's pretty minimal. If you're an action-driven fantasy reader, this might not be for you. Overall though, I just felt Assassin's Quest hit levels that I really didn't even know I wanted from the series, but once they did go there, I just was like, wow, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> wow, this is a great trilogy. Briefly, I'll talk about spoilers. Again, just jump to this timestamp if you don't want things spoiled for you and just hear my spoiler-free thoughts of Robert the Elderlings, but three, two, one, spoilers, go. We need to talk about this ending because talk about bittersweet. Fitz, as a character, I really thought, okay, because he's gone through so much, Robin Hobbs gonna let him have the ultimate happy ending. But boy, oh boy, is that not the case. Uh, not only is there a lot of sacrifice, clearly, in this book towards the end, but Fitz doesn't get a very happy ending. In fact, to protect his daughter and the woman he loves, he has to just forego them and go on his own, which I assume was where his story in Realm of the Elderlings continues on from. But it was really depressing to see that. The dragon inclusion I felt was a bit convenient, but I also like kind of what it did for the magic system and some of the character scenes there. So yeah, convenience, but it helped the story and plot enough that I was just like, all right, I'll put up with this because you're doing some interesting things with it. And he didn't even get to take down Regal in what I would consider a very satisfactory manner. Instead, he proves his continual better than everyone else-ness, not in an obnoxious sense, but in a this is just who fits his way, or he won't even kill him. And instead, he just compels him to move on and continue to be someone who is going to actually be a good king because Fitz broke his brain in that way. And that actually had, like, for me as a reader, it was pretty satisfactory to see that done, but it wasn't, like, the most cathartic, right? Because you want that big, grand showdown, stabby, killy. And while Assassin's Quest did have more assassining than just about any other uh, Farseer book I've read so far, it wasn't up to the level the name Assassin's Quest is going to uh, hint at for you. In fact, the first major attempt at assassinating Fitz does, he fails and has to kind of recuperate before he can come back. And there's also just across this whole landscape, so much destruction, so much loss, going on. And it's not presented in a grim dark way, of course, but this is a sad story. And once it kind of reaches this ending, I'm not filled with a sense of like hope for the future. I'm more just feeling like this is the start of something much 
bigger. This felt like a really good stepping off point. And that's actually gonna tie into how I'm gonna talk about the Realm of the Elderling as a whole, but I will just say Assassin's Quest, I'm gonna give a very solid eight out of 10 for. Uh, it was really well put together, so much payoff, tons of enjoyment. I had a couple little things here and there early on in the series that just, yeah, the payoff didn't leave me the most satisfied. Although I could very easily see how other people would love this type of ending. And I think honestly, the more I sit on it, the more I might come back and like it even more. This one hit hard. Okay, but Farseer Trilogy, let's get into the general thoughts here. This is not gonna be for everybody because there are a lot of readers out there and there's nothing wrong with this who love their action and they wanna read for the action, right? Like that's their priority. They want to get to the big epic battles, the grandiose displays of magic, and that's not here. In fact, the magic system of Farseer, wit and uh, skill, which are very held back in their uh, utilization, are basic telepathy. At least that's how it's presented to us at first. It is explored in deeper ways later on in the series, but it's not this, you know, uh, allomantic level or channeling or anything in Malazan at all. None of the levels that are reached there. It's a much more subtle in the text magic system that's used in almost an intimate fashion. Uh, it's about forging bonds more than anything else. And we have a character who I actually feel like kind of reflects that mentality of writing. And as I've said for Farseer as a whole, like this isn't an action to the forefront story. And when action is done by Robin Hobb, it's extremely effective. It's actually why I defended Robin Hobb in my recent uh, Who Writes Action, the best video I posted the other day, because I found that, well, yeah, she's not writing these like grand epic battles, when she does swing a sword or have a knife be thrust, it's important. And that's nothing to turn your nose up at. An author who's willing to put weight behind every swing of a blade is someone I'm gonna be interested in because I know there's not gonna be any fat around that. It's going to be a very lean and direct uh, type of action that I can appreciate. Don't get me wrong. I like me some grand epic battles too. I just also see the purpose that Robin Hobb's style of writing action serves as well. And that all comes together to present Fitz, this character who I don't think would work in many other authors' hands, stupendously well. Fitz is patient. Fitz is good, despite his horrific surroundings. And this character suffers, but it's not grotesquely over the top written. So you can kind of almost not process what he's putting up with, but I can think of few characters in fantasy who are protagonists, who have gone through as much as fits and not turned into villains or gone down darker paths. It's not in a holier than thou sense. Robin Hobb manages to skirt by that. It's just in a, this is his character. He's someone who's willing to sacrifice for others. He's willing to understand the evils of those around him without losing his own faith. And trust me, there are moments where Fitz seems to be losing himself in another way. But overall, I really enjoy the exploration of Fitz and his development from apprentice to quest. Also, I will add one more criticism to Farseer as a whole. Fitz makes really dumb decisions a lot. It kind of fits his character because he's this very like, I don't know, gullible guy for like the first bit of it. And it kind of just works into what he's playing up to there. But it's not, and it's not, it's not like it's like, oh, girl in a slasher movie running from the monster going into like the abandoned shed level of bad decision making. But it, it's a definitely enough where you're like, no, Fitz, my, my sweet summer precious child, stop stop what you're doing. And I could, I could see some people being really bothered by that. I've seen like most people have a generally positive to very positive view on uh, Robin Hobbs Farseer. Then there seems to be like the fringe over here, which is like, it's my favorite series ever. I love it forever, which, you know, all series have that. And then there seems to be a fringe over here of people who really dislike it. I I've seen a few of their comments and threads. I think it's because, and this is gonna sound maybe silly and kind of shallow, the name, I think a lot of people pick up Assassin's Apprentice and they expect a night angel. They expect something along those lines. And instead when they're delivered a much more political based, uh, muted, not over the top in terms of action or blood and gore story, they're disappointed. I don't know how to fix that with marketing, but I think it's why you get some of those people you'll occasionally see who seem almost like resentful of Farseer. I firmly believe this is a very well crafted story that tells what it wants to tell magnificently. It has some of the best relationship work I've read in recent memory. Having these characters who are constantly reframed re-understood and developed with just tact. There's no other word I can use to describe it. Just tact from Robin Hobb, where you can tell she knew exactly where they were going from the beginning, and she knew exactly how her readers would be seeing them based off how she was portraying them. Wonderful. So if you come to this video to see whether or not you should pick up Farseer, here's my basic pitch to you, and you can judge off of here. Farseer is borderline a character study of a character named Fitz, 
who is put into the role of an assassin, even though he doesn't necessarily want it. And it's not about him going out and doing all these bloody missions. Instead, it's Fitz dealing with the family around him, who's quite awful, while he's learning a certain set of skills. Fitz is rejected, abused, dismissed, and used constantly. And so from there, it kind of naturally spins into a revenge tale as things fall apart. But Fitz is not the kind of character who's going to go out of the way, over the top, murder, murder, murder to get his revenge. It's more about solving the larger conflicts that are affecting the land, because that's what Fitz cares about the most. So if you're a reader who's really driven by character, who loves looking at some relationships, and doesn't mind some very slow pacing compared to a lot of other authors. Like there are other authors who would have all three of these books in one book, but that wouldn't be Farseer. What makes Farseer Farseer is the fact that Robin Hobb is meticulous in the way she writes. She's going to take all the pages she needs to do with these characters what she wants to do. It's also written in the first person, which again, I always kind of grate with for a minute and then my brain adjusts and I'm fine with it. You know, it's, I don't know, Dresden broke me. Now I'm okay with first person. Just not second, unless you're in K. Jimson. There's love, there's drama, there's romance, there's loss, there's quest and it comes together to be a story that I'm a bit confused on as a whole uh, where I'm trying to place it like I'm a very like let's see like how the development and evolution of fantasy has come and to me it seems like Robin Hobb while she obviously has her influences wrote something that feels Robin Hobb. I, I can't look at this and go, oh, she is clearly influenced by X and Y, and this results in Z. That's just not how this was written. Uh, many fantasy authors do proudly wear their influences on their sleeve, and I'm not saying Robin Hobb doesn't have her own, but she does have a strong enough flair where I can't think of anything else within fantasy that reads like her that came before Farseer. And that makes me respect her all the more. Anytime an author is able to show up and bring their own unique style, add something to the pot that's new, a new little spice, I'm interested. If I had complaints for the series, even with the greater exploration that happened in the third book of this world, I wanted more world building. It still felt a bit hollow, a bit contained. Uh, there's kind of this feeling to me where it's like, oh, every, the path they're walking on is realized, but if you went too far beyond those trees, it would just be a cliff drop off of nothing. Like it didn't feel really vibrant and lived in enough. And that's, as someone who's a very world-based fantasy reader, a little bit of an annoyance, but there was enough there for me to be interested and think about. It's not gonna keep me up at night like certain other fantasy worlds, Malazan, I'm looking at you, but it serves the purpose for this character story. And my lord, if you like prose and you're someone who cares about the writing style of an author, Robin Hobb is a gorgeous writer. She clearly takes the time to meticulously craft her sentences to stand out above her peers. No question. So you Rothfuss and Kingkiller fans, I actually think Farseer would be a pretty great step for those people. It has a similar high pro style. It's also not super delved into action. And it's more of just a, let's look at this character and understand them from the standpoint they're coming from and the relationships around them. I can see these audiences having massive overlap, but call me crazy if I'm wrong. I just, in my gut, think a lot of Kingkiller fans would like Farseer. I need some time to think about Farseer and judge whether or not it's gonna be in like my top 10 of all time. It's something I need to really digest and think about, which is a good sign. It's not a bad thing that after I finish something, I need to really meditate on it before I decide how it's really affected me or struck me as a reader. But I'm positive. This is good. Robin Hobb is a talent and a force on her own in writing, and I'm definitely going to be exploring more of her works in the future. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here, and let me know what you think of the Farseer trilogy, Realm of the Elderlings, and Robin Hobb in the comments down below. If you're a King Killer fan, are you interested in picking this up? Or if you have already, let me know if you agree with this level of overlap, or no, you don't think so. I'm interested in all your thoughts, and as always, have a good one, y'all. Peace.